Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have my May wrap up. Is that, we're in June now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have my May wrap up, which I think I read 17 books. Let me just double check. I am very unprepared as per usual. I read 17 books in the month of May. So I am going to be going through and reviewing each and every one for you. And if you're new to my channel, how I do my wrap ups is I start with the books that I like the least and then I work my way up to the books that I like the most. In typical Megan fashion, I do have one book that I need to go on a huge rant about. And then um, I don't think I had too many flops this month. I had a lot of four and five star reads. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. I do a lot of extreme horror videos and thriller videos. And I have a lot of extreme horror and thriller videos planned for June. Probably too many. I might be filming a couple extra videos this month. We will see, okay? We will see. But without further ado, the rant that I need to go on, my one star book. I had one one star book and it was The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Yeah, mm -hmm. this book that everyone in the entire universe has been giving five stars, except for me. So this book, <laughs> ironically enough, is about <laughs> this woman. She's like house sitting for this lady. And she's like house sitting in this like secluded area. There's like no one around. There's one neighbor kind of like miles down the road and they communicate via telescope. <laughs> and she is like, you know, wasting time by reading books on like Kindle Unlimited or whatever and she comes across this book that sucks and she gives it a one star review and the author is psycho and starts like stalking her, harassing her and it goes on from there. So I thought the premise of this sounded great because I am someone that gives a lot of one star reviews <laughs> and I was like oh this might scare me but no this book fucking sucked okay let me tell you why it sucked okay first of all the first like 50 pages were good it was fine and then things just started going downhill from there first of all we have like 100 page long action scenes like action oh wow he's chasing me around the house oh no like literally this man chased her around the house for so long that I was like, there's no way. <laughs> like, this woman would be dead by now because how, like, how, how long can you chase someone around the house for? I just, I felt like this was like a game. Like they were playing a children's game or something. I was like, there's just no way <laughs> that this would be happening for this long. It was like a hundred pages of him chasing her around the house. And then, and then, <laughs> The twists start happening and most of them were extremely predictable. I was like, okay, obviously that's what's been going on this whole time. And then the ones that weren't predictable were just flat out ridiculous. Like so stupid, so ridiculous. I was rolling my eyes. I could not wait for this fucking book to be over. I hated it so much. And then it does this weird thing where it's like you get these like chapters are from the author like the author of the book that's like chasing her and it was just like stupid because it was written as if it were his book like based on the events of what happened I, I just I didn't get it I didn't understand I hated those little chapters they didn't make sense to me they didn't need to be done he sounded like a child she, like, I, I just, I don't understand the hype surrounding this book. Also, the last word is katana. This man swung his fucking katana around so many damn times. Yes, the sword, in case you don't know what I'm talking about. He swung this damn sword around so many times. I was like, why? Why? Why do we need the word katana 97 times in this damn book? Like that's all he could do. He's like, I'm gonna chase you around and swing my sword around in the air. How is no one tired of reading this damn book? I was halfway through this book and I was like, there's no way. There's no way people are not tired of this by now. 
Also, Murder Mountain, the other last word, <laughs> the, the last two words, Murder Mountain was mentioned 37 times in this book. That's his book that he wrote, Murder Mountain. Also, I really don't like the commentary of like, oh, this horror author is a psycho because he writes like, you know, extreme horror type books. And so obviously he's mentally insane and like he's gonna come stalk me and chase me around the house. And all his books have black and white covers. And I'm like, Matt Shaw, Matt Shaw, is that you? <laughs> I just, Editing Meg here. I don't care if I sound like a deranged lunatic talking about this for way too long. But also the other thing about this book that bothered me that I forgot to mention. Why is the motive in thrillers always like, oh, he has a mental illness. He's schizoaffective disorder. Why are we throwing around mental illnesses? Like, if you don't know what schizoaffective disorder is, like, don't even put it in your book for no reason. The vibes were off. <laughs> That's my review. The vibes are off, okay? Then I had two two-star books. The first one being another thriller. The Therapist. I just spit popcorn kernels. <laughs> the Therapist by B.A. Ferris. So this book is about uh, a therapist. <laughs> no, it's about this woman and her husband. They move into this cute little neighborhood. They just bought this house and all the neighbors like hang out and know each other. And then she finds out that the woman that lived in the house before them was murdered. So she's trying to figure out who murdered this woman and who this woman was, so on and so forth. Um, that's about it. Like this book was very slow, very boring. The twists were just not twisting. <laughs> the twists were just like ridiculous. It was just that typical thriller of like, okay, nothing's happening, but she's going around the neighborhood and gossiping with the neighbors and like, oh, let's go out for lunch and we'll talk about like the other neighbors and who used to live here. It was just not exciting. It was not thrilling. It was just boring. I can't even tell you what happens because I don't remember anything about this book and it was just not worth my time. The other two star read, please don't come for me. I know a lot of people love this book. It's The Return by Rachel Harrison. So this book is about this friend group and this girl disappears and like years later she comes back but she's like not quite herself. She's a little bit weird. And so these four girls, like they're <clears throat> trying to rekindle their friendship and they start hanging out again. And they're like, hmm, our friend's a little weird. Like something weird is going on with her. It is very, very similar to Jennifer's body. Like very similar, but um, boring. <laughs> this is just a weird, kooky little horror book. It's like a beginner's horror, um, but it's just weird. And that's not the issue that I had with it. The issue was that it was boring. And it's just like these long conversations of like random side stories that have nothing to do with the actual book or plot. It's just like, oh, our friend's like kind of weird. But let me tell you the story. When I was nine, um, I fell outside when I was playing in the driveway and I scraped my knee and then my dad put a bandaid on it. It was just like these random stories that had nothing to do with what was going on. And I was like, girl, what are you even talking about? This is like if Jennifer's body, like if Needy from Jennifer's body just told us random little side stories throughout the whole movie, it would be this book. Like I was like, what, what am I reading? Sorry, don't come for me. I know there's a lot of Rachel Harrison stands out there. I'm just not quite convinced her writing is for me, but to each their own, okay? Then I had a couple three-star reads. I had one, two, three, four, four three-star reads. Um, Three of them are in vlogs that I filmed throughout the month of May. The first one being Cows by Matthew Stucco. And this one I filmed an entire dedicated video for because this was the extreme horror book that I was always like, oh, I will never read that book because it's too fucked up. <laughs> and I read it and I had reactions. I almost threw up on camera. 
Um, and I also did a full spoiler section. Like the first 10 minutes of my vlog, I'll leave it linked. Um, the first like 10 minutes I did just reactions and a non-spoiler review. The second like, the next like 20 minutes are all just full spoilers. I spoiled the entire book and it took me a really long time to add in all the bleeps that I needed to bleep in order for it to stay monetized. So go watch that video because it didn't get enough love and I'm upset because I wasted so much time bleeping shit out and um yeah it was a fun time. <laughs> then I did a, another um vlog where I read four extreme horror books this month and two of them ended up being three stars. The first one being Hell by Judith Sonnet. This is just like a kooky weird extreme horror book uh, <laughs> that doesn't make sense and it purposely doesn't make sense and um, yeah it's about this guy like Mr. Gloves and you find out what he is throughout the book and it's just like all kinds of weird shit starts happening in this town. It's like this town there's craziness happening, there's demons, there's zombies, there's lots of nutso shit happening. And this one girl is like a clairvoyant and she starts having these visions of like what's happening in this town and that she needs to go there to stop it and that only she can stop it. So she goes there and you just learn about all the craziness that's happening. It's one of those books that it's just not supposed to make sense. It's like an acid trip. So it's just like a little too weird for me. I gave it three stars. Then I read my second J.F. J. F. Gonzalez book and it was Voyeur, which is about snuff films. So we're following this girl whose mom was brutally murdered in a snuff film. And you know, present day, she starts getting these like notes and videotapes slipped into her backpack and it's the actual snuff film of her mom. So now she's trying to track down who her mom's killer was because you know the detectives not being helpful so on and so forth. So it was okay. I liked it but it did like the second half started dragging on and was just not thrilling enough for me. Like it, it kind of followed the typical procedural detective type thriller which I'm not a huge fan of. Yeah I have like more fully fleshed out thoughts in that vlog. I hope. I hope. I never remember my videos or what I said. I'm probably just repeating myself but yeah go check that video out. It'll be linked and then my last three star read was A Part in the Dark by Anya Alborn which is two horror novellas. So the first one is The Pretty Ones. So this is set in the 70s and this is about a um, secretary and there's all these women that she works with that she calls like the pretty ones because they're all like these like hot women that she works with that she envies because she wants to be like them. And then um, there's a serial killer. Killer. This is the time where uh, son of the son of Sam was cruising around the town and something happens and someone in the office goes missing and they think it might be linked to a serial killer or the son of Sam. So you're just following this serial killer trope and I really liked it. Um, I gave the first novella a four out of five and then the second one is I Call Upon Thee and that one was a miss for me because it's just about this girl who her sister dies and she has to go back to her hometown to you know help her other sister out with like you know after her death and dealing with grief and planning and all that stuff and we start learning about her past and some things that have kind of followed her from her past and what led her to you know moving away and all these like weird sketchy things that happened throughout her childhood and it has to do with like the cemetery and ghosts and Ouija boards and shit like that and I am just not a fan of reading about that kind of stuff because it just doesn't scare me it just doesn't do anything for me and I thought it was kind of boring um but apparently it is based off of like a real life scenario that the author went through. So I don't know, I mean I gave that one a two out of five. So overall I gave this three stars right down the middle. Um, I do really enjoy Anya Elborn's writing though. So I am on a mission to finish her entire backlist, which I think I only have a few more left to go.
I had six four star reads. I know, moving on up in the world, am I right? So the first one being Grandpappy by PC3. This one is another extreme horror that I put in my extreme horror vlog for this month. And <laughs> this one is wild. So this is about this guy who goes to his grandpappy's house because he has to help take care of him while his parents are away. And you know, his grandpappy's like dying and they have these, um, hospice nurses like coming in and out and he just has to help like roll him make sure he's not getting bed sores yada 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 and he is crazy grandpappy is crazy there's just a lot going on in this book it's just like a weird disgusting gross kind of extreme horror if you like weird gross horror definitely check this one out i have full thoughts in my vlog but um yeah this one made me laugh. Uh, this one was hilarious to me. And you're kind of following this guy. He kind of descends into madness and you don't know what's like really happening, what the hell's going on. It just goes totally off the rails. I thought it was hilarious and disgusting. And it was just an overall really solid extreme horror book for me. Next, I read the second book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. I read Good Girl, Bad Blood. Uh, this is a YA thriller, which I don't read YA, but these books slap for some reason. And it's like mixed media, like look at this, there's maps, there's text messages, there's interviews, all kinds of shit going on in this book. So we're following Pip, which in the first book, she was investigating this murder that happened in her town because she wasn't convinced that the person who was accused was actually the murderer. So she like went on this mission to figure out who the murderer was and then like wrote it for her school paper. And now in this one, she has her own podcast. So we are following a whole different mystery and something that she's investigating for her podcast. That's all I'm gonna say. I don't wanna give anything away, but it is mixed media. Like I said, audiobook is fantastic. The audiobook literally sounds like you're listening to a podcast because they have a full cast. There's like interviews, there's little sound effects. Like it is so, so well done. So I would highly recommend the audiobook and then even the physical book. There's so much cool shit in here. But like these books for some reason, keep me guessing. I'm just like so invested in like these little mysteries and who did what and what was happening. And they just keep me entertained. I wasn't a huge fan of where this one ended up going in the end, but overall I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to read the third and final book. But yeah, I thought this was real blood at first when I just looked at that. Okay. Then I read the new uh, T. Kingfisher book, A House with Good Bones. This one is just a regular horror book about this woman to go back to her mom's house because her brother calls her and he's like, hey, mom's acting really weird. <laughs> like, can you go investigate the situation? So she goes to her mom's house and her mom's acting really weird. She's living in her late grandmother's house. So there's all kinds of like weird shit going on in this house. And I loved the main character of this one. She's sassy, sarcastic. She feels like a real person. Her character is what completely sucked me into this book because I was like, I love this bitch, you know, like we could be BFFs. So <laughs> I was just completely invested in this character and what was going on. I wasn't a huge fan of where this ended up going. It's like really weird, off the wall, strange horror, which like I said, I don't know. I've been reading all these weird horror books this month. It's not my favorite, but I think T. Kingfisher's writing is just so well done that it just instantly just hooks me and I have to keep reading. I have to know what's going on. I love her writing. It's so easy to follow along. I love her character development. For all, I just thought this one was so well done, even though I'm not a particular fan of like this trope or, or where it ended up going, it still slapped. Slapped is the word of the day today. <laughs> Next is The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. So this one is, I don't know how to describe this book without spoiling it. 
So we're basically following a bunch of people in this small little southern town and this guy, or not southern, apparently it's in Ohio. I was picturing like Arkansas. <laughs> but anyways, this town in Ohio. Um, so this guy's wife is dying and we start following like his story. You know, he goes down this kind of like, he descends into madness and he's like obsessed with you know, prayer logs and sacrificing animals and trying to do everything in his power to get his wife to be healed, whatever. And then um, he has a son and we start following his son throughout his son's life as he grows older and kind of what's been going on with him. And then at the same time, we're following a priest and then we're following um, these two husband and wife serial killers. We're following um, the corrupt local sheriff. There are all these different characters that we're kind of flipping and following along and they all end up linking together in one way or another. I don't know if anything I'm saying is making sense because I don't know how to describe this book without spoiling it. I don't know, but it's very depressing. It's very bleak. It's disturbing. It is just like a slow burn horror story about religion and the sketchy evil side of religion and kind of what some of these characters do and how they use religion as an excuse for their shitty behavior. That's kind of the overall theme and what I gathered from it but I think it was really well written, it was really well done, and I'm going to watch the movie on Netflix. So yeah, I gave this four stars. It's a good old depressing time, and I love being depressed apparently. Next is Evil Rose Up by Otis Bateman, good old Uncle Otis. He is the uncle to my unborn children that don't exist. So yeah, anyways, Travis is a good friend of mine and sent me this book I think the day that it came out and I instantly dropped everything and I read it in one sitting. It's a short little book um, that, you know, Judith Sonnet has those like 10 day challenges that she does where she writes edits and publishes a book within 10 days. Why? <laughs> but I think um, four other authors, if I'm not mistaken, have uh, joined her in this challenge and they all wrote their own little novella about the sea. <laughs> I, I feel like I'm on crack when I film these videos. I am just like brain fog 101. Um, but they all wrote different stories about the sea. Anyways, this one is about these huge like scorpion, this huge scorpion creature that's kind of taking over this town and everyone's in an uproar and they're like, oh my god, the world's ending. These giant scorpions are going to kill everyone. And so this one is kind of exploring. It's not so much the creature that it's exploring. It's exploring all the shitty men in the town and how the men are using, you know, the world's going to end as an excuse to do terrible things. It's just like men doing shitty things as an excuse for the world ending. Or so just following these evil people and I really like that. Um, I just like focusing on real life things, real life horror, the evil side of humanity, that sort of thing and I really enjoyed this one. Um, there were some things in here that I've never seen before in extreme horror. There were so many crazy characters. Dewey is just like a horrible depraved incel. <laughs> and I was like, listen, I low key love him. Like I just love awful, horrible characters in my books. So I was living for that character. And just overall, this was a fun time. This book made me laugh multiple times. I don't know what this says about me as a person, but I really enjoyed it. And I think it was well done. Then I read Ensuring Your Place in Hell, which was another four star read for me. This is uh, three different short stories by Otis Bateman, Stuart Bray, 
and Stephen Cooper. And all three of them are horrific, depraved, disgusting, gross, everything. <laughs> <laughs> and I really ended up enjoying all three of these. I thought all three were... All three did what they were supposed to do, if I'm making sense. I genuinely enjoyed all three of them. All three were violent, gross, depraved, and... I love that. I must admit, Stuart's story about the kidney stones, if you know, you know. I'm obsessed. That one made me laugh so hard. I don't know what it was, but I thought it was hilarious. I don't know what it is about me. I think I'm just, you know, well, first of all, I'm inappropriate, uh, offensive, gross, and I'm very sarcastic. So I feel like this story just checked all my boxes for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, all three of them made me laugh. Also, I mean, I don't know. Uh, once again, I don't know what this says about me as a person. Yep. And then I just had four five-star reads. So the first one, the first one being a thriller. I know. I know. I know. This is my second thriller of the entire year that I've given five stars. And it is The Girl in 6E by A.R. Torre. So we're following this cam girl. She's a serial killer. So she's afraid to leave her apartment because she knows if she leaves her apartment, she's gonna murder a whole bunch of people. She can't control herself. So she locks herself in her apartment for years and years and years and doesn't come out. And she's a cam girl in order to make money. And then she just like orders everything online for delivery. So <laughs> she is just the unhinged woman character that I've been looking for. There is nothing I love more than unhinged women in my books and this thriller just checked all my boxes. I'm like crazy unhinged woman, check. Graphic scenes depicting sexual acts, check. <laughs> this one, I've been seeing people comparing this to um, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey mixed with Dexter. <laughs> Honestly, I agree. There's like so much like scandalous, smutty like d depictions in here. But then she's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna like murder some people real quick. <laughs> so she locks herself in her apartment and she's like, okay, I'm just never gonna leave. And one day that rule gets broken. I won't say what happens, but I loved this. This just was a breath of fresh air for me when it comes to thrillers. I feel like so many thrillers are the same boring, ridiculous thing with the same ridiculous twists and I just don't care. But this one, we got to know this main character so well and I just felt so invested in her crazy ass that I am just obsessed with her now. And this is a trilogy. Oh, I really want to read the next two books because I'm like, listen, I just cannot get enough of this main character. I'm obsessed with her. And it was just such a breath of fresh air because it was like a thriller that wasn't afraid to go there. You know, wasn't afraid to go there with the gore, with the sex, with the whatever. And I really appreciate that. So this one just really did it for me. I can't think of anything wrong with it. So I gave it five stars. Then I read probably one of the most horrific extreme horror books I've ever read in my entire life. And it's Hub by Matt Shaw. <laughs> and this one, <sighs> mm. Mm. I had to purchase this from Etsy because it's banned. You can't get it on Amazon. It is about child abuse and it's about this orphanage that <laughs> doesn't have the best intentions for children and I don't know how to describe this without like offending a whole bunch of people. Definitely don't read this book if you're offended um, by anything involving children. Like this is so heavy and graphic on sexual and physical abuse of children and it is fucked up. Like it is really fucked up. Um, every trigger warning imaginable. A lot of like the gore and violence and stuff happens off page, but it's still so fucked. Like, 
I don't even know how to describe this. So this orphanage doesn't have the best intentions. And then this couple that we're following, they go to adopt this child and they do not have the best of intentions either. I don't know what else to say. This is one of the most traumatizing, disturbing, graphic extreme horror books that I've ever read. But being that it went there, it was supposed to be offensive, it was supposed to be disgusting. Matt Shaw's writing is perfect. I just had to give it five stars. I just honestly don't know what to say about this book. I feel like I'm gonna get canceled for even giving this five stars, but I don't know. I, I feel like I belong in prison after reading this. Like I felt 50% through, I texted McKay and I was like, I think I belong in prison for reading this. <laughs> like <laughs> that is the vibe of this book. And it was messed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next, I have a book that's kind of surprising to me that I ended up loving and it's Adelaide by Genevieve Wheeler. This is a contemporary kind of book um, about relationship trauma. And so we're following this main character, Adelaide. She's in her mid to late 20s and she's kind of talking us through her life and in the beginning of the book, she's checking herself into a hospital because she wants to unalive herself. And so we're following her and, you know, why she's depressed and she starts going through the past, like, couple of years since her early 20s and what happened. And we start learning about this relationship that she is in and you're kind of following this relationship throughout the years and she meets this guy that she thinks is the one and <laughs> lo and behold, we start learning about her relationship trauma and the things that he does and how he gaslights her and just emotional abuse and some of the like physical and sexual abuse that she went through when she was younger and we follow um you know her mental illness and depression and there's just so much that goes into this grief is another huge topic and there's so many topics and hard-hitting emotional things about this book and i lived through this like this was spot on a relationship that I went through and I just felt like I wrote this book. You know, I didn't experience everything that this author or this <laughs> this author, this main character experienced, but there was just so much that I was like, oh yeah, mm -hmm, been there, done that. Like, so if you are looking for something that will make you feel like you just went to a therapy session and vented about your relationship trauma, Look no further. This was stunningly written, by the way. Um, and I just love these like slow burn character driven type books. Uh, and I was just completely obsessed with Adelaide. I just like I said, I saw myself in her so many times that I was like, I can't not give this five stars. If you've seen my best book so far of 2023 video, this one was in there because I just couldn't not put it in there. This is easily one of the best books I've ever read in my life. Not even kidding. And then last but not least, of course, my favorite book that I've read this month was Them by McKay Watson. My friend McKay here on YouTube wrote this book. It is a debut book by him and it is extreme horror. So we're following Jeanette as she discovers there's like this warning on the TV and all these people in the town are being murdered by people that they love, like their loved ones are murdering them. And we find out it's not actually them. They're like, clones of their loved ones and so the whole town's in an uproar um and you're kind of just following her from there and the things that she has to do and it's a perfect mix between regular horror and extreme horror there's so many graphic extreme horror scenes that i absolutely was living for it is just beautifully written and i just can't wait to read more from McKay in the future. Like he is not only my lover, my twin, my twin cest bestie, um, but you know what? He has quickly become one of my favorite authors of all time. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can't wait to just keep reading more from him. This was such a well done debut extreme horror book. Like, he, I feel like his writing is better than most extreme horror authors that I've read from. Like, I'm not even gonna lie. Um, I don't know. Just everything about this was perfection. This story had me so entertained. I was so it was so suspenseful. Like I just needed to know what was going to happen and I just had to keep reading. I'm just so happy for him. I'm so proud of him. I will never ever ever shut up about this book and I love it so 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 much. Definitely go check out this book. Go buy it on Amazon if you haven't already. I'm watching you. You better go. You better go buy this. You better go read it. Okay? I'll be checking up on you all individually. <laughs> but yeah, one of my favorite books I've read so far this year. That is it. Those were all the 17 books that I read in the month of May. Let me know in the comments down below if you read any of these, what you thought, and also let me know what your favorite book was that you read this month, and maybe I'll check it out. Maybe. Sometime in like 2028, I'll check it out, okay? I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.